Richard Trenton Chase, May 23, 1950, December 26, 1980, was an American serial killer who killed six people in the span of a month in California. He earned the nickname the Vampire of Sacramento due to his drinking of his victim's blood and his cannibalism. He did this as part of a delusion that he needed to prevent Nazis from turning his blood into powder via poison they had planted beneath his soap dish. A self-described victim of abuse at the hands of his mother, Chase exhibited by the age of 10 evidence of the McDonald triad. Bedwetting, pyromania, and zoo sadism, allegations which were later called into question. In his adolescence, he was known as an alcoholic and a chronic drug abuser. He suffered from erectile dysfunction due to psychological problems stemming from repressed anger. Chase developed hypochondria as he matured. He often complained that his heart would occasionally stop beating or that someone had stolen his pulmonary artery. He would also hold oranges on his head, believing the vitamin C would be absorbed by his brain via osmosis. After leaving his mother's house, believing she was attempting to poison him, Chase rented an apartment with friends. Once he moved in, he immediately boarded up his bedroom door and created an escape hatch through his closet wall so no one can sneak up on me. Chase's roommates complained that he was constantly intoxicated on alcohol, marijuana, and LSD. Chase would also walk around the apartment nude, even in front of company. Chase's roommates demanded that he move out. When he refused, the roommates moved out instead. Once alone in the apartment, Chase began to capture, kill, and disembowel various animals, which he would then devour raw. Chase reasoned that by ingesting the creatures, he was preventing his heart from shrinking. In 1975, Chase was involuntarily committed to a mental institution after being taken to a hospital for blood poisoning, which he contracted after injecting rabbit's blood into his veins. He often shared with the staff fantasies about killing rabbits. He was once found with blood smeared around his mouth. Hospital staff discovered he had drunk the blood of birds. Staff began referring to him as Dracula. There were arguments as to whether Chase was schizophrenic or suffering from a drug-induced psychosis. After undergoing a battery of treatments involving psychotropic drugs, Chase was deemed no longer a danger to society and in 1976, he was released under the recognizance of his divorced parents. Various staff members at the institution protested this decision. His mother, deciding that her son did not need to be on the antipsychotic medication that he had been prescribed, weaned him off it and got him his own apartment. Later investigation has uncovered that in mid-1977, Chase had been stopped by an Indian agent on a reservation in the Lake Tahoe area and arrested. He was wearing a blood-soaked shirt and driving a truck containing guns and a bucket of blood. He convinced them that it was a misunderstanding involving an animal he'd hunted. No charges were filed. Murders and Aftermath On December 29, 1977, Chase killed his first victim in a drive-by shooting, Ambrose Griffin, who had been taking an evening walk with his wife. Griffin was a 51-year-old engineer and father of three. After the shooting, one of Griffin's sons reported seeing a neighbor walking around their East Sacramento neighborhood with a 22 rifle. The neighbor's rifle was seized, but ballistics tests determined that it was not the murder weapon. On January 11, 1978, Chase asked his neighbor for a cigarette and then forcibly restrained her until she gave him an entire pack. Two weeks later, he attempted to enter the home of another woman, but finding that her doors were locked, walked away. Chase later told detectives that he took locked doors as a sign that he was not welcome, but that unlocked doors were an invitation to come inside. He was later chased off by a returning couple as he pilfered belongings from their home and urinated and defecated on their beds and clothing. Chase's next victim was Teresa Wallen. Three months pregnant, Teresa was surprised at her home by Chase, who shot her three times, killing her. He then had sex with the corpse, greatly mutilated it, and bathed in the dead woman's blood. 
on January 23, 1978, two days after killing Teresa Wallen, Chase purchased two puppies from a neighbor, killing them and drinking their blood. On January 27, Chase committed his final murders. Entering the home of 38-year-old Evelyn Meroth, he encountered her friend, Danny Meredith, who he shot with his 22 handgun. Stealing Meredith's wallet and car keys, he rampaged through the house, fatally shooting Evelyn Meroth, her six-year-old son, Jason, and Meroth's 22-month-old nephew, David. As with Teresa Wallen, Chase engaged in necrophilia and cannibalism with Meroth's corpse. A six-year-old girl with whom Jason Meroth had a play date knocked on the door, startling Chase, who fled the scene in Meredith's car, taking David's body with him. The girl alerted a neighbor who alerted police. Upon entering the home, police discovered that Chase had left perfect handprints and perfect imprints of the soles of his shoes in Evelyn's blood. Chase returned to his home, where he drank David's blood and ate several of the baby's internal organs before disposing of the body at a nearby church. In 1979, Chase stood trial on six counts of murder. In order to avoid the death penalty, the defense tried to have Chase found guilty of second-degree murder, which would result in a life sentence. Their case hinged on Chase's history of mental illness and the lack of planning in his crimes, evidence that they were not premeditated. On May 8th, the jury in the highly publicized case found Chase guilty of six counts of first-degree murder, and Chase was sentenced to die in the gas chamber. They rejected the argument that he was not guilty by reason of insanity. Waiting to die, Chase became a feared presence in prison. The other inmates, including several gang members, aware of the graphic and bizarre nature of his crimes, feared him. And according to prison officials, they often tried to convince Chase to commit suicide. Chase granted a series of interviews with Robert Ressler, during which he spoke of his fears of Nazis and UFOs, claiming that although he had killed, it was not his fault. He had been forced to kill to keep himself alive, which he believed any person would do. He asked Ressler to give him access to a radar gun with which he could apprehend the Nazi UFOs so that the Nazis could stand trial for the murders. He also handed Ressler a large amount of macaroni and cheese, which he had been hoarding in his pants pockets, believing that the prison officials were in league with the Nazis and attempting to kill him with poisoned food. On December 26, 1980, a guard doing cell checks found Chase lying awkwardly on his bed, not breathing. An autopsy determined that he committed suicide with an overdose of prison doctor prescribed antidepressants that he had been saving up over the last few weeks. The 1988 movie Rampage was loosely based on Chase's crimes.